and welcome to another video in my IGCSE of Mice and Men English Revision Series. We can't really think about of Mice and Men without thinking about our two main protagonists, George and Lenny. So we're going to be looking at what themes can we link to George and Lenny and how can we link them to the context of 1930s America so that we can get those top grades in Edexcel IGCSE English Lit. So, perhaps pause the video and think, what themes could you write about with George and Lenny? Because although there are some kind of um, topics that come up in the, in the exam often, things like dreams, uh, things like um, companionship, sometimes you do get a kind of more random one. So think about perhaps what uh, more kind of obscure themes do you think you could link to George and Lenny? We're going to be really focusing in this video on how uh, they could link to the idea of loneliness, companionship and also dreams. But um, even if the question asks something a little bit more random, often you can kind of link it back to some of those main themes. So let's think about um, the context of George and Lenny in 1930s America. So as you know, the 1929, the, Great, uh, the Wall Street crash happened, which led to the Great Depression. Equally, the Dust Bowl, uh, you know, farmland had been badly managed and therefore um, there were you know, droughts and uh, the land was very dry and lots of farms lost all their crops. And as a result, in the 1930s, over 300,000 migrant workers made their way over to California. So California was really seen as this place of hope. Um, where people would go to find work. So if we think about the idea of dreams, California was this idea of if you go to California, that's somewhere that's less hopeless than these other places. You might be able to find a job. But we can also link it to the idea of loneliness because all these, you know, in terms of ranch workers, these men actually were travelling to California, maybe a state they'd never been to before where they didn't know anyone and they were going from ranch to ranch to ranch trying to find work, not necessarily having any roots or anyone to kind of uh, fall back on. So we've really got this whole idea of kind of California is a place of dreams that actually aren't reality. You know, people have this hope and it's it actually doesn't lead to anything, but it's also a place kind of where there's a lot of loneliness, there's a lot of lonely people. And yes, loads of the characters linked to loneliness and loads of them linked to the idea of dreams, but I think really with George and Lenny, there's so, so much you can say about those themes in particular. So as always, every single video I ask you this, what is John Steinbeck trying to say about society in 1930s America? So don't just think about how George and Lenny link to loneliness or how they link to um, dreams, but also think specifically what was John Steinbeck trying to say about society um, and what were his kind of thoughts and opinions. Now, what's in a name? So um, we've got George and Lenny, George Milton and Lenny Small. So first of all, let's look at Lenny. So what's really interesting, actually, is John Steinbeck himself worked as a ranch worker. He, uh, I think we can see how um, powerful his descriptions are because he himself was a ranch worker. He would have slept in a bunkhouse and he actually knew someone like Lenny, um, someone who uh, was mentally disabled, was very childlike um, and someone who actually ended up killing another ranch hand where he was working and then was sent to an asylum for the rest of his life. So when we have, uh, for example, Crook says to Lenny, um, you know, you'd get locked up um, in, in like an asylum. Actually, again, that, that was the reality that John Steinbeck had experienced. Um, but Lenny small. So think about what kind of perhaps what was the kind of meaning behind the word small. Um, because obviously it's definitely not to do with his size. It's almost, it's, it's ironic, isn't it? Lenny's a really big guy. But Lenny Small, perhaps think about his mind or his kind of childlike mind um, is perhaps a bit of a meaning behind that. Feel free to put a different interpretation in the comments. And then we have George Milton. Now, again, a little bit more um, kind of intertextual. That means we can link it to, to other texts. Um, Milton wrote Paradise Lost, which was a retelling of the story of Genesis and the, and the fall of man. So I think when we've got George being called George Milton, it's kind of a direct link to the idea of um, the fall of man and, uh, you know, this, this perfect situation actually being imperfect. Um, and particularly if you look at some of the other videos that I've done, um, you'll see that uh, I talk about how the descriptions at the beginning with the water snake in the brush. Actually, there's a lot of kind of allusions to Genesis and allusions to the Bible. 
Um, so yeah, if you'd like to learn more about that, have a look at the rest of the videos in this series. So we've got, yeah, Lenny Small, perhaps small-minded, George Milton, this idea of a dream, um, something perfect being destroyed uh, as linking to Genesis in, in Paradise Lost. So George and Lenny, first time we, we kind of hear about them, uh, we have this quote, they'd walked in single file down the path and even in the open, one stayed behind the other. Now, what I find really interesting about this quote is, first of all, we've got this idea of leadership. George is going ahead. Lenny is following him like a child or like a like a dog. Um, and, you know, obviously there are lots of allusions to Lenny being like an animal throughout Of Mice and Men. But I think it's all also interesting, given all the imagery we have in the text to do with being solo or uh, being alone, it's interesting that they walk in single file, even when they don't have to. So they walk, they don't actually walk next to each other. And perhaps... Is that perhaps foreshadowing what happens at the end when actually George is left alone um, after Lenny dies? But if you think about all the kind of references we have to one, we've got the the um, setting, Soledad. We've got George playing a lot of solitaire. So we've got all these kind of um, references to, to single and then they walk in single file. So it, it kind of um, enforces this idea of these migrant workers. They're kind of destined to be alone. Um, and even George and Lenny, who are different and have each other, even they walk in single file. It's quite interesting that's how they first get introduced by Steinbeck. So if we look at George and how he's described, the first man was small and quick, dark of face with restless eyes and sharp, strong features. So again, I think his features here, they're sharp. It kind of represents his mind. George is quick. He's quick in terms of he's a quick thinker. Um, he's intelligent, but he's also quick and sharp when it comes to anger, doesn't he? He has a bit of a temper. We see even in chapter one, he gets really angry at Lenny because Lenny wants the, the ketchup. And then kind of George kind of cools off after, and you know, kind of realises he's made a mistake. Um, so again, his kind of image reflects his personality there. And we see him get really cranky um, at Lenny. He says, God almighty, if I was alone, I could live so easy. I could go get a job and work and no trouble. And we've got this really sad, um, when you look back, isn't it? It's really, really sad that, George, that this George says this because he says it at the beginning, you know, if I was alone, I could live so easy. And yet he ends up alone and it's not a happy thing. You know, George says he wants to be by himself, but actually that's not what he wants. He he might find Lenny to be a real pain sometimes, but actually at least Lenny is, is companionship. It's a friend that he has. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's, it's ironic that that's... Um, this is what George wants, but yet when he gets it, it's actually not really what he wants. Lenny is his opposite. So behind him, so again, this kind of really powerful image of George being in front and Lenny just following. Behind him walked his opposite, a huge man, shapeless of face, with large pale eyes. And he walked heavily, dragging his feet a little, the way a bear drags his paws. So already we've got this... Um, kind of image of Lenny as a bear um, and if you you know look down we've got lots more uh, similes and metaphors here of, of Lenny being compared to an animal so he drank with long gulps snorting into the water like a horse he dabbled his big paw in the water slowly like a terrier who doesn't want to bring a ball to its master Lenny approached and strong as a bull so think about why do you think Lenny is compared to an animal so much throughout of mice and men I think one interpretation is that animals are innocent, aren't they? Um, so a lion, a lion, um, you know, obviously kills prey and it hurts other animals, but it doesn't do it to be mean. It does it because, you know, that's what that's what lions do. Um, and I think we've got this image here of Lenny being compared to a, a bear, a horse, a bull. All these are big and strong, aren't they? But they're they're not mean. They just don't think like human beings because they're not human beings and I think that kind of represents uh, Lenny's mind and Lenny doesn't do bad things on purpose he's just animalistic in that sense um, of acting almost instinctually and then we've got this quote at the bottom uh, Lenny who'd been watching imitated George exactly so again we, we've almost got this idea of this parent-child relationship there because um, Lenny copies George and Lenny, you know, very, is very childlike and, childlike and George is the parent figure. And, and there'll be loads more quotes that you could find um, and like different ways you could find to explain that. Um, unfortunately, I can't go into all of them or this video would be about 10 hours long. Um, 
but yeah, the, the whole image of kind of George being this parent figure, Lenny following behind, I think is summed up in that quote there. Now, as I said, loneliness and companionship are kind of two sides of the same coin. Uh, a, a huge theme in, in the novella, lots of characters um, are lonely, uh, but George and Lenny are different. And we've got this um, in chapter one when they're in the brush, uh, they're kind of, it's just the two of them, it's quite uh, perfect, you know, um, there's lots of beautiful nature around um, and George is kind of first talks about their dream. So George's voice became deeper. He repeated his words rhythmically as though he'd said them many times before. Guys like us that work on ranches are the loneliest guys in the world. With us it ain't like that. We got a future. We got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. Lenny broke in. But not us and why? Because, because I got you to look after me and you got me to look after you. And that's why. And this, it's almost like a refrain, this, this little story like, um, I got you, you got me, we got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. Because it's repeated later in the novella. Um, and we've got this repetition of we got a future, we got somebody to talk to, this this repetition of we, we've got these short sentences which kind of add these kind of poignant uh, kind of pauses, I think. Um, it's very poignant, certainly when you look back, isn't it, when you know how the, how the text finishes. Um, but there's this acknowledgement here from George and obviously from John Steinbeck that guys on ranches are the loneliest guys in the world. So a bit of hyperbole there. Um, but I think John Steinbeck's not kind of uh, beating around the bush when it when he's kind of making his point here. Um, loneliness is a key part of the novel, and George and Lenny are different because they have each other, and that's why they're different. But at the end, they're not different because Lenny's dead and George is alone. And there's a there's actually two conversations that George has with Slim about it. I remember Slim is this godlike, authoritative figure, this kind of natural, powerful um character uh, and slim you know um people consult him on any topic whether it be politics or love so a very wise person to talk to slim looked through george and beyond him so it's almost like slim is having this kind of vision in a way because he's not looking at george he's kind of looking out into the distance ain't many guys travel around together he mused i don't know why maybe everybody in the whole damn world is scared of each other it's a lot nicer to go around with a guy you know, said George. So there's kind of musing from Slim. Why do, Why are we all alone? Everyone's kind of united in their isolation, really, especially uh, if you think about kind of the ranch. We've got all these characters on the ranch, all of them alone. Curly's wife, she's the only woman. Crooks, he's the only black man on the, on the ranch. Uh, Candy, he's old. He's, he feels like he's about to get cast off. We've got all this loneliness, but kind of ironically, it's all together. And then George and Lenny's dream. And again, this is introduced in chapter one, um, where, you know, after after they talk about I got you and you got me, George says, someday we're going to have a little house and a couple of acres and a cow and some pigs and I'll live off the fat of the land, Lenny shouted, and have rabbits. So they've both got this their own version of the dream. So George's is much more practical. George talks about, you know, the house they'll have and, and how they'll make money, they'll... Um, and what their kind of days will look like. Whereas Lenny, all Lenny wants to do is tend the rabbits and he wants to have rabbits of all different colours. So it's introduced again in chapter one. So if we think structurally, John Steinbeck is making it very clear that uh, the dream uh, is is very um, important when we think about George and Lenny, when we think about the themes in the novella. And then, you know, very much at the beginning, if we think about that quote um, previously, uh, George spoke rhythmically as if he'd said this many times before. So this is something that George and Lenny have talked about. They've talked about having this land and having the rabbits many times. But it's it's very much been a dream and not something rooted in fact. But then when they speak to Candy, after Candy's dog is taken away, it becomes something that might actually happen. When Candy says, look, I can give you this money straight away if you let me come. We'll go off, we'll buy her, we'll have our own land. Suddenly this kind of dream that they never really thought would become reality actually has. So George stood up. We'll do her, he said. We'll fix up that little old place and we'll go live there. He sat down again. They all sat still, all bemused by the beauty of the thing. 
So we've got this interesting image here where George kind of stands up with this kind of statement of intent. We'll go there. We'll do her. We'll live there. Again, we, we, we. Emphasising this is something they're going to do together. George, Candy and Lenny are not going to be alone. They're going to have their own land. They're going to be together. And then he sits down and they all think about how beautiful this thing really is. They might actually get to be their own boss. But if we think about structure, we have this really beautiful, calm moment where these three men realise, you know, what, what they might be able to have in their life. And immediately after is when Curly bursts in and for no reason attacks Lenny. Um, well, the reason being that he's just angry and he thinks Lenny is an easy target. So if you see, he slashed at Lenny with his left and then smashed down his nose with a right. Lenny gave a cry of terror. Now, I think that's interesting because... John Steinbeck introduces this idea of, wow, this dream might actually happen, and then immediately violence. Um, you know, a violence that's not even um, prompt, like Lenny doesn't do anything to make this happen. And if you look back at the video that I made about Crooks, the same thing happens um, in, the, in the later chapter with Crooks. Crooks says to Candy, could I come and maybe join you and, and work for my keep? And then immediately Curly's wife comes in and it's very verbally abusive to him. So we've got dream, violence, dream, violence. Is this the way that John Steinbeck kind of structures it? So it's it's possible that he's kind of, um, well, think about what he might be saying. It could be that all these migrant workers coming to California with this dream, actually, it, it's almost violent in how destructive that is because they will never reach that dream. All these people with hope, their hopes are going to get destroyed. Think about perhaps how you could phrase that uh, to do with what is John Steinbeck trying to say um, about dreams and violence. You might be able to come up with something really interesting. And then we've got this moment where after Candy um, and George find Curly's wife um, and Lenny's disappeared. And Candy and George, I think, have this realisation together that, oh, wow, this dream is never going to happen. Um, and again, if you have a look at the video I made on Candy, I go into that in a bit more detail. But George said softly, I think I knowed from the very first. I think I knowed we'd never do her. He used to like to hear about it so much, I got to thinking maybe we would. I'll work my month and I'll take my 50 bucks and I'll stay in some lousy cat house. And then I'll come back and work another month and I'll have 50 bucks more. <sighs> Sad times here. So, George kind of admits here that he the dream was too fantastical for him. He didn't really have confidence that it would ever happen. And then he has this realisation that his life is going to go back to like every other ranch worker. He'll work a month, he'll take his 50 bucks, he'll spend it. He'll come back, work another month, take his 50 bucks and spend it. And he'll never be able to escape that cycle of working for someone else, not having security, not being able to build your own family or your own life for yourself. So it, it's kind of, it reflects back to um, chapter one when George is saying to, to Lenny, um, if I didn't have you, my life would be so easy. And then we have him again acknowledge that at the end, he realises what his life now is now that he doesn't have Lenny. And if you think about the, the structure of the novel, it starts in the brush with George and Lenny, it ends in the brush with George and Lenny. So we've got this cyclical structure where something starts and finishes and goes back to the beginning. And it kind of, uh, symbolises the life of these migrant workers. They work a month, they get paid, they spend it. They work a month, they get paid, they spend it. So that's quite an interesting quote here, I think, from George that reflects that idea. And then we have, obviously, the sad, the saddest uh, scene, in my opinion, in the novella, and it's, there's lots of sad scenes, uh, where George has to shoot Lenny. So when we talk about dreams and violence, we've got another illustration of that here. George... Um, says to Lenny, you know, look out in the distance and he starts telling him about the dream and they talk together and we're going to have rabbits and I'm going to tend the rabbits. And then Lenny begged, let's do it now. Let's get that place now. Sure, right now. I got her. We got her. And George raised the gun and steadied it and he brought the muzzle of it close to the back of Lenny's head. The hand shook violently, but his face set and his hand steadied. He pulled the trigger. So again, this, this idea that John Steinbeck's like, wow, look at this dream, violence, dream, violence, again, happens at the end. George and Lenny discuss their dream that they've talked about many times before, and then George has to shoot him. And George ends up completely alone, 
Um, and the dream is now nothing but a dream. Um, not just for him, for Candy as well. And uh, yeah, very, very obviously sad um, way to end the novella. But let's look back to what is John Simic trying to say about society in 1930s America? So we've covered quite a lot of points that, that kind of link to that now, but perhaps um, have a go at writing out your own answer. Um, how would you write a, a paragraph on loneliness or companionship? How would you write one on friendship? So similar, but a bit different. Uh, how would you write one on dreams or destruction of dreams? There's so many different questions that you could um, link George and Lenny to, or if you've got a question that was about George or about Lenny, there's so many different themes you could link your answer to as well. So as always, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and uh, put in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to cover for my cement so I can pop it in future videos.